Hi everyone, welcome to the Kilkenny Community Church uh, Sunday morning video and uh, this is the first Sunday in October and uh, I hope you're all well and looking forward to hearing the word. I'm going to be doing the fifth in the series of the power of the spoken word and we've already had Pat and Jean and John and Andy and Patience and uh, I'm going to be continuing on that series today. Before I start I just want to um, just give us a recap of the kind of things that we would speak um, uh, from the word um, and the kind of things that were talked about. So first of all <clears throat> We would use the power of the spoken word to make declarations over ourselves, over our loved ones, over our situations, even over our communities. Um, we would also use the power of the spoken word when we're praying for situations. We can actually use God's words from the word and uh, pray for situations with his words. When we're praying for people, perhaps they're people who are sick, and we're with them, we can lay on of hands and we can use the power of the spoken word to declare their healing in Jesus' name. We also use the power of the spoken word to bless, to bless uh, other people, to bless our enemies, to bless our properties, our, our, our homes, our animals, our, our workplace. Um, we can use the power of the spoken word to bless. We use the power of the spoken word to receive things by faith, things that we believe in our heart that um, are ours by faith. We can use the power of the spoken word to bring those things to come to us, to be received. We can also use the power of the word to rebuke the enemy and the powers of darkness. And don't forget that it's not just uh, reciting the Bible. Once we get the Bible into our hearts, we can then use our own words because we know we're speaking the truth when we're um, speaking from the Word of God. So today, what I want to talk about is the authority of the spoken word. That when we speak, we have a conviction in our hearts. We are speaking with a certain authority when we're using the Word of God to, to do declarations and all the other things that we've talked about. And I want to start with a, a verse, and the verse is in Psalms, and it's chapter 8, and verse 2, which says, Out of the mouth of babes and nursing infants, you have ordained strength, or other uh, translations would say power, or boldness, because of your enemies, that you may silence the enemy and the avenger. And what I want to talk about today is that as new creation believers, we have authority and we have authority to speak the word with power and to see things changed in our lives and in the lives of others. Have you ever felt that your, somebody has said to you, all you need to do is to declare the word and yet you're declaring the word and yet you just feel as though they're words that just fall to the floor. Now there are reasons for this. And, you know, it's not a magic potion. The word is not a magic potion where, or you just have to speak the word and something will happen. Um, it's not like that. You need to have within your own heart as well a conviction and a certain authority when you're speaking the word. And today we want to have a look at that and why sometimes that can be missing in our uh, speaking of the word. Sometimes we wonder why our prayers are not being answered. We sometimes wonder why they just seem to have no power um, and this is what I want to uh, talk about. I want to start with going back into history a wee bit. God put Adam and Eve into the Garden of Eden and he gave Adam and Eve authority uh, when he put them in the garden. He gave them, he said, go forth and multiply. So all authority on earth was given to mankind at that time. And God wasn't going to take back that authority from mankind that he had given, otherwise he'd be violating his own nature and he kind of wouldn't be God anymore. So, got Adam and Eve were in the Garden of Eden and then along came Satan. He deceived them, 
they sinned and in the process of sinning they gave to Satan the authority that God had given to them. So therefore then Satan was the one who had authority in the earth and he still has. But in the kingdom of God he does not have authority. From the time that, uh, that Satan had authority until the day that Jesus first came the devil had all that authority because of the sin of mankind. But along came Jesus, thank God, and uh, he, he, he took back that authority from the devil. We're going to take another little look at that in a minute, but before we do, I just want to go to another verse, and that verse is Isaiah chapter 59 and verse 16. Remember what I said that God gave mankind authority on the earth. It had to be a man that would take back authority from the devil. And Isaiah 59 verse 16 says that God saw that there was no man and wondered that there was no intercessor. Therefore his own arm brought salvation for him and his own righteousness it sustained him. So Jesus came as a man. He came to earth as a man, so he had authority. But not only did he come as a man, but he came as a sinless, righteous man who had absolute authority over all the things that are wrong on this earth to put them right. And then he passed that commission on to us. And you can see that in Matthew 28, besides other verses, Matthew 28, verses 18 to 20, where Jesus says, all authority has been given to me. And he said, therefore, go and make disciples and teach them everything that I have taught you. Um, which means teaching us to take authority uh, on, on the earth. So Jesus took authority when he was on the earth. He, he didn't have to wait until he had died on the cross and rose again and then start to take authority. He had authority straight away when he was on the earth and the devil had to yield to his authority. Why did he have authority? Because he was righteous, because he was sinless, and therefore the devil had to yield to his authority. I just wanna illustrate this from a story in Mark chapter two. It's a familiar story if you've been a Christian a while, but I'm not gonna read it from the scripture, I'm gonna explain what happened. Uh, Jesus was teaching in a house in Capernaum and it's, I suppose you could imagine it a bit like a, a church meeting or a life group meeting and Jesus uh, is, is there speaking and therefore it was quite a popular meeting and the whole of the town came to the meeting so there were people everywhere in the house, outside the house, even on the house. There were crowds and crowds of people jammed in and jammed around the house to get to hear what Jesus was saying. And four men with a friend who was a, para a paralytic, he was paralyzed, he was laying on a, on a mattress. They wanted to bring him to Jesus because they believed Jesus could heal him. But they couldn't get into the house, so they made a hole in the roof and they dropped the, or rather they lowered carefully their, their friend down in front of Jesus as he was speaking. And can you imagine if you're, uh, you're, you want to get healed and you, you come to Jesus and instead of healing you, he says, oh son, your sins are forgiven you. Can you imagine that must be a bit of a letdown? Um, but what Jesus was doing when he said that was that he was testing the Pharisees which were, who were in the room. And when he said, son, your sins are forgiven you, the Pharisees were thinking to themselves, who is this fella? How can he forgive sins? Only God can do that. And Jesus answered their thoughts and he said, what is it easier for me to say to this lad, your sins are forgiven? Or to say to him, uh, get up, take up your mattress and walk home. And so he said, therefore, to show you that I have authority and power on the earth, I say to you, get up, take up your mattress and go home. And the paralytic did just that. 
and I want to just illustrate three things that Jesus was proving here that are very important for us. Firstly, he proved, Jesus proved that the forgiveness of sin brings righteousness. Secondly, he proved that righteousness brings authority. And thirdly, he proved that sickness and the powers of darkness have to give way to the authority of righteousness. Jesus had authority before he died on the cross, but the reason he died on the cross was so that he could take our punishment for our sin so that we could be righteous in him. If you look now at Matthew verses, uh, sorry, chapter 16 and verses 19, we can start to see proof that uh, we're righteous in him and that we have authority um, to uh, uh, deal with the works of darkness and to speak with authority. So Matthew verse, chapter, chapter 16 verse 19 says, Jesus said, I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven. Whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven, and whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. And that word keys means authority. And the word heaven there doesn't necessarily mean the place up in the sky where we believe we go when we die. It also means the, the, the realms, the different realms that, are, uh, that exist, the, the invisible realms, the powers of darkness. Um, that's also what that word heaven means. So we have authority over the, the realm of darkness, the invisible realm. Also, if you look at 1 John, verses, sorry, chapter 3 and verse 8, and the last part of that verse says, For this purpose the Son of God was manifested, that he might destroy the works of the devil. And after that, well, before that, in chronological time, but we, if we also look at John 20, verses 21, Jesus said to them again, the disciples, Peace be unto you, as my Father has sent me, even so I send you. And so with all that in mind, that uh, we are on the earth, we, we, we are here as children of God to take authority over the powers of darkness and to take authority over the things in life that are wrong um, and to bring them to, to, to be right. So why do we struggle to use our authority? We're told to use the power of the spoken word, but why does it seem there's no power when we speak those words? Well, I believe that part of that is to do with our understanding of our righteousness in Christ. And when we do have a, a full understanding, we, we do discover that we get much more boldness uh, and we take authority in a much more confident way. When we first get Christians, there are a lot of, there's a bit of jargon around and there's a lot of things that we, we start to learn. Some of the, what we call the basic truths of Christianity and some examples of that might be grace, humility, faith, peace, justification and righteousness is one of those as well. So we're learning these basic truth, truths, but very often those things are in our heads. We're learning them up there in our heads. And that can go on for decades and decades. And in my experience, it certainly did. But there's a, no actual lifestyle of it where it becomes an automatic way of living. Um, this can happen so often. I like to, to say it like this, that we can have theology and we can have lifestyle and theology often versus lifestyle. Let me explain. Theology works out of the conscious mind. So when you have a theology, you're thinking about it at the appropriate time and you're acting the part when it is appropriate. On the other hand, if you have a lifestyle, then that is operating out of your subconscious. It, you don't even realize that you're operating that way because you've built that truth so deep inside of your heart or subconscious that you're operating out of that automatically. Ephesians 4.23 talks about the spirit of the mind and that we should renew the spirit of our mind. And I believe the spirit of our mind is synonymous with our subconscious. So you're living out of that truth of that theology automatically. 
we can also look at it like this say you've gotten upset with somebody and you uh, you haven't told them that you're you're offended with that person but you're thinking about the offence and you're thinking about it over and over again for days and days and days and you're determined that you're not going to let them know you're offended with them and you're going to try to pretend that you're not offended with them but eventually you just blur out that offence it comes out of your subconscious because you've thought about it so much and you've dwelt on it so much that you've developed um, it into your subconscious and then it comes out of your, your yourself automatically well, we can do the exact same with good things too. We can do that exact same thing with the truth, uh, some of those basic truths, but we have to almost deliberately do that. We have to deliberately say, I'm going to come under the, that, that subject. I'm going to come under the word where that's being talked about. I'm going to study that particular uh, theme of, say, grace or faith or peace, and I'm going to read books about it, and I'm just going to continually... Um, study on that thing until it actually becomes a lifestyle within me that I work out of automatically. So understanding righteous, for you, is, under, is, is righteousness a concept or a theology that your sins are forgiven? Is that all it is? What does it really mean? We th often think we know what it means until we maybe reach out to pray for somebody with cancer. And the next thing we know is condemnation. I'm not good enough. I'm not righteous enough. I had a row with my, my partner. I have had bad thoughts. All these things start to come up, this condemnation. And that is a test of what we truly believe. You just think, well, I'm just a sinner. I, I haven't got the strength or the power to pray for somebody and see them healed of cancer what if it doesn't happen what are good people going to think about me if it doesn't happen all these things go through our heads because we really don't have that that real uh, understanding and that real um, experiential knowledge with the person of who is righteous which is jesus christ so often when we go to pray for somebody or to speak the word of God, that that's the test that we really believe or don't believe uh, our righteousness and um, whether or not there's a boldness in, in what we're speaking. Let's have a little look at some verses so that we can um, uh, clarify that we are the righteousness of God in him. The first, there are an awful lot. There are, there are loads of verses. Um, there, there, there's no end of them in the, in the New Testament and there are also some in the Old. But I'm just going to do two or three here. First of all, 2 Corinthians verses five, sorry, chapter 5 and verses 21. For he made him, that is Jesus, who knew no sin, to be sin for us, that we might become the righteousness of God in him. Ephesians 4.24 tells us to put on the new self, created to be like God in true righteousness and holiness. And Romans 3.22 says, We are made righteous with God by placing our faith in Jesus Christ. And this is true for everyone who believes, no matter who we are. However, after all of that, we also have to remember that it's not our righteousness, it is the righteousness of Christ and it's given to us as a gift. Which, if you look at Philippians 3.9, Paul clarifies this. He says that he would like to be found in him, not having a righteousness of his own that comes from the, the law, but that which is through faith in Christ, the righteousness that comes from God on the basis of faith. Being the righteousness of God in Christ doesn't mean we never sin. It just means that the sin nature no longer dwells in us. We can sin and we can ask for forgiveness right away and then we can go on, we can move on. Sin no longer has a hold on us like it did before we were born again. And our spirit man, our new creation man, is identified with Jesus. It's funny because 
when we're not trusting in him and his righteousness and when we try to take authority in our own righteousness and in our own strength then we just end up sounding like a clanging cymbal i've done that myself i've i've tried to take authority and i maybe have had condemnation in some way or another or just haven't been in faith um, and it just 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 sounds like noise it, there's just no power attached to it however if we just sink back into him and trust in his righteousness we realize the power and authority that was always there in the first place did you ever play um, that game or that activity uh, team retreats where you, you you have to just close your eyes and just fall back and you have to trust that your friend or your colleague is going to catch you behind you um, that's the kind of way I like to think of sinking back into Jesus knowing that I am created like him in my new creation and that I can avail of all those things that he died for me on and I just when I need to um, walk in the spirit I just imagine myself just falling back and letting him catch me another word for righteousness is being perfectly as we ought to be. Imagine you had a cat and the cat went and caught a mouse, which is what you wanted. You can make a fuss over that cat, you can give him a pat on the back as well, but he's only functioning as he was created to function and what is expected of him. And it's the same for us. Taking authority is a normal function of our new creation. We shouldn't be making a fuss about it or looking for a pat on the back. We just go ahead and do it because that's how we're created to be. All humans create by speaking what they see. That's the way we're created, whether we're born again or not. I'll give you an example. You get up in the morning and you know it's going to be a stressful day. What do you see? What do you perceive the day is going to be like? And does the words of your mouth begin to reflect that? Imagine you have a pain in your body and straight away you start to perceive that this could be the sign of a serious sickness. What are the words that start to come out of your mouth? Perhaps the words should be, oh, by Jesus' stripes I am healed. But it could have been something more negative than that. How about you lose your job for whatever reason. What do you start to see? What do you start to say? Do you start to say, how am I ever going to manage? How am I ever going to get another job? Or do you say, well, God says he knew the plans that he had for me. He knows the plans he has for me to, to, to give me a hope and a future. You see what I mean? We create by speaking what we see. So it's really important for us to begin to see how God sees and to begin to get to know the word and start to speak with authority when we start to see things in our hearts. That's just the way we're supposed to function. We're supposed to function that way naturally, consistently and positively. I just want to um, read another chapter here, or sorry, not a chapter, a couple of verses here. Um, from Jeremiah chapter 1. Um, now you could read the whole of Ch Jeremiah chapter 1 if you like and when you do imagine yourself in Jeremiah's place because this could very easily um, be speaking to you because this is the way God speaks, um, this is the way God wants us to function. But I'm going to just do um, from chapter, sorry, verses 9 and 10. God said to Jeremiah, Behold, I have put my words in your mouth. See, I have this day set you over the nations and over the kingdoms to root out and to pull down, to destroy and to throw down, to build and to plant. And then after God said that to Jeremiah, he said, Jeremiah, what do you see? And you can continue to read. But I just wanted to show you how th this is part of our new creation um, function is to root out and to pull down with the words of our mouths, to destroy and to throw down, and also with the words of our mouths to build 
and to plant. And it's all to do with what we're seeing, what we're perceiving. Jesus, if you read through the Gospels, you can see how Jesus was perceiving and seeing with his heart the whole time. And that's the way that we are created in our new creation, um, new man. I just want to briefly recap on the three things that Jesus proved in Mark 2, just to leave you with. Firstly, he proved that the forgiveness of sins brings righteousness. So, if you've had your sins forgiven, you are the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. Secondly, he proved that righteousness brings authority. So if you are the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus, you have authority. And thirdly, he proved that sickness and the powers of darkness have to give way to the authority of righteousness. So that should give you much more boldness when it comes to speaking the word and praying. It is very challenging in these days to be able to live life as a believer. We need to know what we truly believe. We need to understand that we are the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. And when we do so, we will have much more boldness in these challenging times. And we will be able to speak and to declare and to pray with authority. I want to just finish with a small prophetic word that God gave me. It is so easy to accept the theology that our sins are forgiven. But have we arisen from our paralysed state? Have we begun to walk in the spirit and in the kingdom? Have we shown proof of our belief in righteousness by our ability to walk as new creations in him? To speak the power of the word with authority. If you do need to get much more deeper into this understanding of our righteousness in Christ, I would encourage you to do that, to take time, to spend time for a number of days or even weeks looking up verses on your Bible app, look up all the verses that speak as righteous or righteousness and begin to get a, a real depth of understanding, not just of the words, not just of the theology, but of the person of righteousness who is Jesus Christ, an experiential knowledge of what it really means and you know, boldness will come and the, um, the confidence and of taking authority uh, will come. Well, I want to thank you for listening and I hope you have a good Sunday for the rest of the day and I look forward to seeing you on the internet or in the flesh very soon.